morning, welcome back to Regimentals YouTube channel. Um, here we are once again um, in Monroeville, uh, just outside Pittsburgh, for the 2019 Mac Show. It's the, uh, well, one of the biggest and most famous long running military shows in the world. Um, it's interesting because I, I just, it kind of uh, dawned on me yesterday that I started this YouTube channel almost uh, one year ago and one of my first uh, really successful videos was the Mac Show video last year where we managed to purchase a very large collection of um, German spiked pickle hobs. Um, and yeah, it's already been a year, lots of successful videos. Looking forward to the show. Um, the show opened last night uh, for setup. Uh, there wasn't much uh, really to be bought last night. It wasn't very successful for buying. Um, today will be the big day and um, all the dealers are outside waiting to get into their tables and I'll try and shoot some footage of uh, people setting up today here at the show. So I've just come back to my room, um, had to drop some stuff off that I bought here. And uh, while it's quiet here, you don't have the noise of the show, I just thought it a quick um, opportunity to show you a couple of the things that I bought this morning. Um, what it is for, for myself, for my own mannequin, I, I needed some SS buckles. Um, and the SS buckle that everybody wants to get is called the Rodo. It's, it's the maker, the manufacturer is Rodo, R-O-D-O. Um, so I managed to pick up two of them here at the show. Now usually they come with um, a lovely matte finish green paint um, over them. These two unfortunately have lost all of their paint finish. Well one of them you can just see the remains of, of the paint finish um, and you can see the paint on the back obviously but the front of them has lost their finish. Um, so imagine th th this buckle here with an olive uh, matte finish paint but the way to, to look out for these buckles whenever you're at a show um, and you see an SS buckle always ask to see it, always ask the person to take it out of their glass case because on the back there's a distinctive way to, to spot them um, yeah they do have the, the the maker the maker's name Rodo just here on the buckle um, but if you look at the back you can see uh, the shape of the catch how one arm one arm of the catch um, it points upwards. Um, that is the thing to look for. On, no, on a normal SS buckle, uh, the catch will be well uh, soldered in there and straight across, but you, you notice how it's pointing upwards. Uh, there are copies of these made. Um, however, the way to spot the copies is that the, the indentation of the word Rodo, where the manufacturer's label is, is ve always very, very clear and large, whereas on the originals, um, it's almost very difficult to spot the, the manufacturer's mark. Um, these ones, they, if you find one with the paint still on the front of the buckle, it will sell for, you know, almost 1,800, 2,000 pounds. Um, I managed to pick these ones up at, at like six, seven hundred dollars each. Um, you know, I would sell them um, for probably eight fifty. Um, but um, yeah, there is a real big price difference between ones with paint and without. I just needed them for my mannequins, and if I'm going to buy any SS buckles, I'm always going to try and get a Rodo. Okay, so it's uh, Saturday today, uh, approaching the end of the show. Um, I've got to be honest; it's not been a success, you know not been a very um, productive show. Um, really hard to find um, 
anything of extreme interest. Um, and the, when you do find something that's really interesting, the prices are just so high. Um, there's, there's two sides to that. One is, yeah, if you're a collector and you've got a good collection, it's a real positive because it just shows that still, after all these years, the prices are still you know, really on the rise. Um, I'm just finding that I'm having to pay uh, prices for items which you know, is the same as what I sold the last um, item for. So if, if I sold an army dagger for, for 500, I'm now paying 500 for that same item to be able to sell it for six. Um, so yeah, prices are on the up, which has made buying very hard. While I'm here, I just wanted to run through a few things that I've picked up here um, at the show just to keep you updated. So I'm at, you know, as, as you know, Africa Core, um, I, I used to collect it. I'm always on the lookout for good Africa Core items, especially caps and tunics. Um, and I managed to pick up this lovely first pattern cap here. Um, it, it, I can tell by the shape that it's one of the last of the, uh, the first patterns to be made. It's never had a soutache um, applied to it ever. You can see the solid line of stitching here on the brim, which tells me that a soutache has never been on there. Um, the way the insignia is, is, is applied, uh, both the round or and the eagle are machine stitched um, and you look inside the cap you can see yeah no no sweatband but that insignia application um, is it, it tells me that the, the cap is made by Carl Halfer he was the only maker that used to zigzag stitch both the roundel and the uh, and the eagle um, where the maker mark was it, it you can see the outline of the rectangular box typical of Carl Halfer, but unfortunately the maker mark is completely faded away, so you can't see that. Lovely wear here on the front. Again, no signs of any soutache um, anywhere on it, but you know, still a first pattern cap. So, you know, you're talking about the price being not quite where a, um, a 41 or 42 dated cap would be with soutache, but still, um, I still think I'm gonna be asking very close to three thousand pounds for that, probably two and a half thousand um, pounds. A real nice, salty, well-used piece. Um, while I'm on the um, the caps, I just wanted to show this piece here. I've been collecting SS items now for a few years, and this is uh, one piece that I bought for myself for my own collection, and it's it's really nice. It's a textbook example of the um, the SS M43 cap. Now, with M43 caps, um, it gets quite technical, but what I can tell you this is that the collectors, what they really all want is the, um, the dual insignia to the front, the eagle um, above the skull, with the single button, and then they all want this light-colored brown single button. You see pebbled buttoned, you see two button caps, you see um, caps with the skull at the front and the eagle at the side, um, you see caps with just the skull on the front, but the textbook example that, they, that, that most collectors want, it's the Holy Grail, is, the, is, is this configuration. Really, really super. It's, it's so classic of the typical thing. And then when you look inside, you can see the very typical SS grey cotton lining. It has um, stamps here on the side. Uh, it says size 56, um, but also a contract number there, which would tell you which, which factory made it. But that's the typical lining for SS. Um, one thing to look out for when looking at these caps is always pull back this scallop here and look under here for the for the white reinforced line. So that was for my own collection. Yes, I had to pay a awful lot of money for it. However, um, I think it's a good investment um, as um, as I previously said. All prices are just you know continually on the rise here. So eventually. Um, one day when I sell that, I don't think I'll do too badly. One of the, or two of the really nice pieces I picked up here at the show I want to show you is um, American helmets. Now, I don't necessarily specialize in American um, helmets, but I, I do know what's popular. Um, US Marine Corps ones with covers always sell. US paratrooper helmets always sell, even though they're quite heavily faked. Um, but I picked up this one here. I actually picked up two American helmets, both from the same collection. And the reason I know they're from the same collection is because they both have the same sort of collector's label inside. Um, but what it is, if you look here, it's a beautiful 
camouflage helmet and this one's been put together by a, a marine raider quite a rare, rare um, unit within the US Army um, it's a hessian sack cover which has been covered with string and then heavily camouflaged as well um, really thick paint on there really you, you can just this is you know a classic you can see when you hold it you can feel the originality in it um, really lovely piece that will, will be very popular with our, our, our collectors of American helmets and then the other piece I picked up from the same dealer um, was this helmet here again it's come out of the same collection so this this was this was collected by someone um, years ago and they obviously put labels inside to tell them remind themselves what they are um, it's got a Hawley liner which is the most popular liner it's the the, the fabric one there but the insignia on the front is the 29th division um, the age on that um, insignia there is, is unbelievable you can see it's been on there for 75 years and uh, there's a little damage here a crack a dent at the top but um, as most of you will know the 29th division they were the unit who were uh, there on D-Day Omaha Beach um, so the 29th division helmets um, are always fast sellers the price is very very high for these but you know obviously I had to pay um, to be able to get it um, it was not cheap but really nice it's been a long time since I had uh, a 29th division I, I think it's got to be going on 12 15 years since my since I had one really nice and I was so pleased because you know I have a lot of um, German items um, World War One World War two a lot of British um, American I'm always getting asked for American stuff um, but you know this was my chance here to take advantage of being in America and and finding those pieces so they'll appear on the website fairly soon um, I hope you've enjoyed the video um, I'll be back in the UK um, and hopefully um, see what I can and find back there at the next show